الحمد لله لا اله الا الله والحمد لله تعالى بالحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم we're back again with a street dawah movement islam help us welcome again we're in the game الحمد لله street dawah we're doing it up from Sydney Australia base camp doing lockdown yeah let's do this الحمد لله so while you guys are at home الحمد لله we're coming up with ways of keeping you in the dikkah keeping you in islamic education islamic knowledge sharing keep you up your spirit uplifted inshallah uh it's good for human beings in general, Muslim, non-Muslim, it's good da'wah, good invitation to us, what is good for all humanity. We were sent as a rahmah lil alameen, you know, a mercy to us all, mankind and all the universe, all the world, so alhamdulillah. So today we want to talk about in our digital interactive da'wah, you are, feel, feel free as well, those who are watching live, feel free to also, inshallah ta'ala, comment, ask a question, inshallah ta'ala, keep it respectful, please. Um, your question, uh, if I don't catch it while I'm live, I'll catch it in my comments later after the... Jason, if you see any question, brother Jason, there's all the he's helping me with the, with the live side of things. If you see any question pop up or any comment, let me know if anybody has a question while I'm talking and I can, inshallah, address it for them, inshallah ta'ala. We, we as a group, as a family can address it, inshallah ta'ala. We want to talk about today about a special part of Ibadah. It's a very, actually a very... SubhanAllah, very relevant topic I'm seeing today nowadays. May Allah SWT guide us all and forgive us. No one thinks they're better than anybody else, but Allah SWT says, um, In other words, Allah SWT says, Mankind has completely lost, has gone astray, has doomed itself, except those who believe and do uh, good deeds, righteous deeds, and remind each other of the truth, remind each other to have patience. Okay, so now Allah SWT does not make it a stipulation for you to be a perfect angel in order to remind someone else of something. Like I could be, I have my own faults, and I do of course, we all have our own faults, you know what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean when you see something out there that's wrong, you don't call it out, you don't enhance the munkar. You, have to, you still have to call out the munkar, call out what's wrong, you know, and, 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 and command the person, remind the person for the sake of Allah SWT to stop the wrong, and, to, and also to remind of what's good. You know, remind others to pray, remind others to give zakah, remind others to help each other, help other people, to give da'wah to non Muslims, etc. So, this is very necessary. So, we've seen something, um, th this is a topic that's pretty widespread today in today's uh, modern society, what's going on, we're seeing uh, in, in our Islamic society today. Um, I'll start with a story, um, and it's a very general story, uh, that this happens uh, quite often. So, um, basically, um, I've noticed in the community people who uh, go around, uh, you know, reciting Quran, for example, doing dhikr or mashallah, they, you know, they got the beard going on, got the full, you know, dress code happening. Alhamdulillah, Kufi and Galabiyya, Kuli Hada Gamila, mashallah, they're looking very dini, very pious, and it's a beautiful outside appearance, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But what we're going to discover today is that it has to start on the inside. And I've been having this conversation with a lot of my friends too over the past few days, friends and family about this um, topic that really importantly needs to be discussed. So please share, share, share the information however you can, brothers and sisters. Propagate, you know, and you earn your share in the hasnat. So uh, you see people walking around, mashallah, reading Quran or they got the musaha in their hands, mashallah, doing tasbih, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah. This is a beautiful amal. This is perfect part of ibadah. We call it ibadah is worship. In Arabic, in the, in, in, in the Deen of Islam, it's called ibadah. This is the word for worship. Uh, and there's two types of worship. This is something very important, and I'll get to that soon. So, people going around reciting Quran, mashallah, doing ibadah, having a dress code, mashallah, smelling good, looking nice, doing dhikr of Allah, alhamdulillah, subhanallah. Yet, and they're, they're seen praying, you know, uh, with the with the jamaat, they're seen praying with, you know, with the with the, with the brothers, uh, you know, in, in the masjids. You know, they're, they're known to be people who publicly show piety, acts of worship in public. And this is not to say that they're all munafikin or they're hypocrites, but some of the same members of the community, like, you know, I was talking about one brother today um, that, you know, um, even today on my way here on the train, he was sitting on the bus and much like he's doing this dhikr. And every time I see him, actually, he's reciting Quran. He's sitting on the Quran every time, I, every time I see this man. He's walking around the streets of Lakemba, or he gets on the bus, on the trains. He's reciting Quran. He's surrounded by Muslim, non Muslim, he doesn't care. And I find that a beautiful thing. I actually admire it. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 a, it's a gorgeous thing, and I want him to continue doing it. But the problem is that this same person 
Every time I've tried to say salamu alaikum to him, he has not responded back to me. Uh, even today, he was very rude. Like when you saw me actually get on into it, I don't know if he's racist. I'm not going to mention his background or nothing, and that, that, that's irrelevant. But he's different than my race, and uh, he's Muslim. And I get on the train, and immediately when he, gets, when he sees me get on the train, he like made a face at me, like a, some kind of face of disapproval or dislike. Immediately gets stuff, grabs his stuff, and runs away. I've only seen Kufar do this, by the way, to me. I've only seen Kufar do this. This is the first time I see an actual Muslim do something like this. So he gets up, I say, I'm the corona. <laughs> Jets out, you know, immediately, like, dude, what SWAT team is after you? you know? Anyway, he disappears. And I said, Alhamdulillah, I make sure you heard me say, Alhamdulillah, that he's leaving. And I said, like, Ba'd al Shaitan Anni, Alhamdulillah, right? But Alhamdulillah, but anyway, Allah, Allah guided me, Allah guided me. But this is just one example. So this person, remember, I see him doing dhikr of Allah, reciting Quran, yet when it's time to show any manners, welcoming to his brother in Islam, he shows racism, he shows dislike, he shows separatism, he shows bad manners, he shows bad akhlaq. You know what I mean? And this is what the problem is, this is what we want to address and help you guys understand. So, we're going to go by our chart that we have here, the Salaam al-Khair Abu Nuruddin, the Salaam al-Khair Abdullah, get some information here. So, there's two... Uh, general forms of ibadah, worship. There's the narrow meaning of ibadah and there's the broad meaning of ibadah. Some examples of the broad meaning, okay, let's we'll start with the narrow meaning which everybody knows. Salah, zakah, praying, doing your, you know, giving charity, um, doing dhikr of Allah, you know, mentioning Allah, so the Messenger, go on and hajj, etc. Fasting, qiyam al layl, what have you, you know what I mean? Uh, just um, uh, different, uh, reading the Quran, seeking knowledge, these all forms of ibadah, worship, yani, formal forms of worship. But then you got the broader ones, such as smiling at your brother or sister, showing kind manners, helping a person in need, you know, like giving a helping hand. Um, sleeping is, is an act of worship. If you go to sleep for the sake of Allah at the proper time, so you can wake up at the proper time, pray your fajr, function, at, seek knowledge, and go about your day doing the righteous acts that please Allah. So just, um, Marrying for the sake of Allah, raising kids for the sake of Allah. These are the broader forms of worship. Helping your neighbor, showing kindness to the neighbors, that sort of thing. Going to work is an act of ibadah. You know what I mean? Going to work for the sake of Allah so you can benefit yourself, your family, and the ummah at large. All right? So now, between these two, these are just examples of the two basic examples. Between the two, they should be connected. The, the, the whole idea of the thing, they, they, the phone died. The whole it's shut down. No. There's, the, there's the charger there, Barakallah Fee. The, the whole idea of it is that when you're doing this one properly, when you're doing you know, this narrow form of ibadah properly, that should transfer, that should have a play, that should have an effect on the heart. It's supposed to be softening your heart, giving you khushio, giving you humility in front of Allah Ta'ala, and it should transfer into those broader acts of worship. Okay? So if you're doing this properly and it's being accepted by Allah, a sign of, a sign of its acceptance by Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala is the fact that it's transferring over into your broader aspects of your personality, like your, your attitude, your, how you carry yourself, how do you, how do you treat others, how do you deal with people. If you're a person that prays and shows piety, prayer, and reads Quran, it should reflect on how you live your, your everyday public life, in your secret life, even at home or wherever. It should reflect on how you live, how you treat others. You know what I mean? And if, it, if, if that's not reflecting, if you see a person, and I, and I know a lot of people have said, I, I, I'm not one of those people in the Shabbat, I'm, I hope you listen, inshallah, but a lot of people say, don't be fooled by uh, this um, misconception, this, this deceit from the shaitan. When the person says, for instance, um, you know, I, I'm a nice person, so, but I see some brother, let's say you know an individual who, who does pray. Who does worship? You you do you do know him to fast and dress religiously and stay up at night praying and reciting Quran. And you know this person to, to, to do these things. Yet when they when they interact with other people, their their manners are lacking. You understand? Know their manners not like you know the trash can over there. You understand? Know but the, yet this other person that doesn't pray is very nice, very pleasant. You know what I mean? Very easy to deal with. Maybe even charitable. Maybe very helpful to other people. Okay, but the reality is you got you got to have a bridge between both. That's the proper way to be. You got to be somewhere in the middle. You got to be, and if again, if this is being done correctly, the the prayer, the worship, and all of that, reciting Quran, then this it should reflect on this, or else there's a disconnect. There's somewhere wrong in the heart. Something's wrong with the personality. Aliyah could, could even be a hypocrite, but we we want to just 
encourage people to, if there's something, if you see that this is not connecting, work work on this, you know, the sincerity, you know, uh, and ask Allah Azzawajal to guide you and forgive you, and ask Allah Sultana to guide me and forgive me, and to make this connect the best way possible we all can make it connect, you know what I mean? It's, it's, this is not here to make, a, make anybody think, you know, make anybody feel accused of being a hypocrite or a monopic or anything like that. Um, but it is something that we want to stay away from, because like, Allah Sultana does not like the person who um, is worshiping Allah Azzawajal, but then this is not transferring over into the, how they live their life, you know what I'm saying? Um, this is, uh, again, I repeat, it's a, it's a sign that you, your worship was even accepted. The fact that you treat others nicely, it's a sign that your worship was accepted in the, in the first place. Now, proof of that is uh, the ayah that says, In the Salat al Tanhan al Fasha wa al Munkar, wa al Munkar, wa al Nikr lahi akbar, wa lahu ya alamu ma tasna'un. Indeed, the, the prayer, your, 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 your act of worship when you're praying, okay, is something that should ward off or push off. Uh, any desire to commit indecency, immorality, or bad manners. That's what fasha and the munka means. Basically, indecent acts, immoral acts, and lack of morality. Okay? Lack of good manners. Alright? Anything that's wrong. So, the, the, the fact that you're praying, if you're sincere in your praying, you're reading Quran, you're, you're tasbih, you're ibadah, this should be purifying your heart to demonstrate that iman outwardly in your daily interactions, daily life, your daily living. All right, at home, at work, anywhere, marketplace, wherever you are, at business, all right? And Allah knows what you're doing. He knows what you are producing within yourself. He knows what you're working on. He knows what's, you know, sincere, what's not sincere, you know? So some one of us may seem pious. I may seem pious to you. Allah knows who I am inside, you know, whatever you don't see. Anybody, this is for anyone, you know what I mean? So, and, and to explain, to further illustrate that this the hadith of the two ladies, for example, that's mentioned, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, some people came to him and, and, and they mentioned a, a, a lady uh, that was uh, Okay, the, uh, the, as Dalil, as proof, as evidence of that, uh, there's the hadith of the two ladies. So one, one lady was mentioned to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and uh, the people said, Ya Rasulullah, this individual, Fulana so and so, um, we know her to pray, we know her to recite Quran, we know her to be up at night praying a lot. If she makes it Yani, widely known about her that she does these things. She makes it evident. She makes it publicly known that she does these things. Uh, however, um, her neighbors complain about her or people are, are the report of her bad manners, ill treatment of others, you know? And, and so what about her, Rasulullah? What's her fate, basically, they're asking. Rasulullah says, in her final, you know? Indeed, she's in the hellfire, you know what I mean? Even though this person seems, seems so high and so high up in the, in the status, through way of ibadah, worshiping Allah, showing so much dedication. Yet, however, that ibadah basically did her no, no avail, no benefit, because it wasn't pure, it wasn't sincere. Maybe she was just doing it to show off Allah you know what I'm saying? So this person is known to be doing these things, and there's other narrations similar about this, story, similar to the story as well, with the two brothers, you probably have heard this, but anyway, so she's known to be doing all these admirable acts, worshiping Allah SWT, yet the way she treats others makes people want to run away from her. So what is the benefit? How is it transferred over to her lifestyle? You know what I mean? That's what we're talking about. There's a problem there. So this shows her lack of sincerity. Therefore, Allah SWT put her in the hellfire. We seek Allah's refuge from that. And that's Allah for Allah. And then, however, there was another lady that they said, Ya Rasulullah. On the other hand, there's this other lady who we know, she's probably just moderate in her um, worship. Maybe just prays the fund, meaning the obligatory prayers. Nothing much more, maybe occasionally fasting, that sort of thing. Nothing major outside of the common required worship, you know what I mean? All right? But however, she's much nicer to people. People applaud her and they, they praise her for her interactions with others, how she treats other people. Nevertheless, she's very kind, so she's known to be very good, even though she is seen doing less worship than the other one. So, so, so some say, this one is in paradise. You know, they, they say, in happy for those of you, gentlemen. In Hafidjan, she's in she's in heaven. This one, you know what I'm saying? So you see the contrast between the two. So you gotta be meeting, it's gotta be meeting somewhere halfway. It's not also that you leave prayer, because this is the misconception I want to declare. Some people have this criticism. Some people unfortunately have had a bad experience, maybe in massages. Uh, you know, no one's an angel anywhere. So don't like judge Islam by whatever you see uh, the humans doing. The Ummah, we're, we're human beings, we have faults. I have faults. You're gonna definitely see me make errors. You, you yourself make errors, and everybody around you makes errors. You know what I mean? So, 
a person praying at least is trying to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They're gonna have flaws. You know what I mean? So don't get this, this misconception, inshallah, brothers and sisters. I plead with you, please, that you see some people even make a ge general statement. They say, these people pray, they're all mean. I, I've actually heard people say that, I don't know if you guys have. But there's people who actually have that view. Oh, everybody that I've seen praying has been an evil person, or even in their families. This person prays, but he's harsh with me. You know, sometimes it's even the father or the mother, also. Like that is forgiven. This person prays and is doing constant worship, but you know, so, and then these people think that the, make it, the proper mechanism to take is to get away from worship. Oh, because people who worship, they associate that with somebody who's mean, lacking in manners, ill treatment. Okay? But actually, no. That All that means is that, yes, that person, is, it's good that they're worshiping, but they need to work on their connection of their heart with their worship. Because when that is functioning properly, then that's purifying the heart, and again, it's stopping the monk and the fashat, and it's making a person a kinder individual. If the if the ibadah, if the worship is being done properly, and sincerely in connection to Allah SWT. Um, to add further to the illustration of that, on the, to add on the other end, Brother Abdullah Zawla Khair, he shared some information uh, in a, a teaching about, uh, from Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah Ta'ala, um, that there was, you know, also when you see people, don't judge. Basically, the, the, the story goes about three individuals. A woman uh, who is seen getting in the passenger seat of a taxi cab, okay? A woman who is seen, instead of getting into the back seat, gets in the passenger seat and drives off with the person, taxi driver. The other one is a uh, brother who passes by a masjid while the adhan is going off and the person does not go to the masjid. And the third one is a person who's walking down the street and it's greeted, salamu alaikum, and does not return the salam. Okay, so in explanation, the woman ends up being the wife of the uh, taxi driver who, who she got in the car next to, okay? And the person who um, heard the event and didn't go to the masjid was someone who had prayed already at a different masjid. And then the person who was given the salam and did not return it, he was deaf. He did not hear the individual, okay? So keep these things in mind. Um, so we'll uh, finalize with a final closing statement. Um, Basically, uh, to, to summarize the idea of this whole thing, uh, there is a saying by the Salaf, by the righteous predecessors, okay, of Islam. That these are the scholars of these scholars, meaning uh, students of the Tabi'in, who were students of these Sahabs, who were the students of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says, "Hey, the come, man, if you saw him, the karam, the karam the 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 best of you is, it is a lot of hey, the come, hey, the come hadith. But of course, we, we put it, all this together. We use our inshallah, our uh, guidance from Allah and we use our intellect inshallah and we put it all together re reconcile all this so of the best of you is those of you who when he is seen in public he reminds you of Allah meaning by how he acts not necessarily by him preaching or by him reciting Quran or by him being seen praying but just by how he carries himself how he interacts how he flows to the people how he treats others how he treats the creation of Allah so just the plants the humans the animals you know what I mean himself, etc., etc. Right? And of course it's better to be seen worshiping. This is not saying don't worship or, or not, you know, you should shun. Obviously, no. You should have both. They're both fun. Your worship is fun. You know what I'm saying? Do not think that you can be a good person and that's it. That's the only way Allah SWT is going to let you into heaven. You have to the worship is fun. Allah that says Akimu Salah wa Atu Zakah. It's a command from Allah SWT. It is obligatory. You know what I'm saying? But it's also obligatory upon you to have good manners. والله تعالى تعالى عالم إن الحمد لله رب العالمين أكل ما تسمعون الحمد لله واستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله رب العالمين إن تقول إيه هو تورحين الحمد